was clearly wrong about you. It's okay. Most people are. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 times Brooke Davis was the best character on One Tree Hill. I'm glad you're my godmother. Me too, buddy. For this list, we'll be looking at the most awesome B. Davis moments that have cemented her place as Tree Hill's most amazing resident. Plot points will be discussed, so consider this your official spoiler alert. What's your favorite Brooke Davis moment? Let us know in the comments. Number 20. When she rallied the workers. When we first meet Brooke, she's the popular rich girl. Early on, it's a big part of her identity, but that identity gets tested when her parents run out of money and she's forced to fend for herself. In season two, Brooke gets a job at a restaurant to keep her head above water. But when she realizes how badly her fellow workers are being treated, she rallies them to fight for their rights. The six most humiliating hours of my life and I made $15? It's not even a moment of her saying that she deserves better because she's Brooke Davis. Instead, it's her realizing they all deserve better because they're human beings. Two 15 minute breaks. One. Hey Mars, did I say two 20 minute breaks? Yep. In a time when it would be easy for Brooke to crumble, she shows us what she's really made of. Number 19. The Corner This is such a beautiful moment between Brooke and Haley. The pair reopened Karen's Cafe in Season 8, and the series finale sees Brooke surprising Haley with the news that she's also opening her new clothing store, Bakerman, just across the street. Did you hear there's a new tenant moving in across the street? No. Huh? Oh. Hope they're nicer than the last one. Mm, I think they'll be okay. Little place called Bakerman. When you look back on the show as a whole, it's striking to see how many important moments happen on that corner. The characters grew up here and felt safe in their slice of home. Through this nostalgic journey, Brooke and Haley embrace the fact that this part of Gray Street is forever theirs. Seeing Brooke take this step, fostering even more community in the place that raised her alongside one of her best friends, never fails to warm our hearts. It'll be our own little corner of the world, you and me. Number 18. When she welcomed Anna to the group. Though they have a complicated friendship, Brooke Davis and Peyton Sawyer have always held a very special place in each other's hearts. So when Peyton starts to develop a friendship with new girl Anna, Brooke maybe gets slightly jealous and even a bit cruel. But all that animosity soon fades, and seeing Brooke finally accept her into the group is so touching. Yeah, and I'm saying screw the double standard. That's good, Brooke, you should say it. And so should I and every other girl who is tired of playing their game by their rules. Though she shows a more vindictive side to herself at first, she's also incredibly gracious, admitting she was wrong. Sparked by a moment where all the girls open up these profound parts of themselves, Brooke finally sees Anna and allows Anna to truly see her. Looks like we have a few things in common after all. I'm sorry, I was kind of a witch before. Number 17. When She Went Home When we start season 5, the show has jumped forward four years. At this point, we discover that Brooke is living in New York and that her clothing line has blown up. She's famous, she has money, she has acclaim. What more could anyone want? But when Peyton calls her feeling lost, Brooke admits her own uncertainty about the true meaning of happiness. Are you happy, Brooke? Sometimes. Not always, are you? And that's not all. She moves back to Tree Hill, risking everything to reunite with Peyton, who's recently returned home as well. This epitomizes who Brooke Davis really is at her core. When a friend is in need, she's willing to drop everything to be there in an instant. We're home now. It's gonna be okay. Come on. Number 16. Rescuing Peyton from the College Monster Early on in the show, Brooke has this reputation of being little more than the wild girl at school. Of course, that's a deeply incomplete portrait, and this moment is one of the first where we see just how layered and caring she is. The season one episode sees her and Peyton attending a college party. We're young, we're fine, let's do some damage. There, a guy disgustingly sneaks something into Peyton's drink, but Brooke won't have any of that. She fearlessly barges into his room, shoves him off, and gets her friend out of there and to safety before contacting Lucas for additional assistance. Who knew Brooke was such a badass? 
Lucas says it himself. He was clearly wrong about her. And hey, you did get her out of there. Number 15, telling Jamie to take a stand. By now, we've established that Brooke is a fierce friend and protector. This directly translates into the type of godmother she is to Jamie Scott. When he decides to race in the soapbox derby, the guys get a bit overzealous in helping him prepare and forget to listen to what he really wants. But Brooke never loses sight of what matters. Jamie. It's supposed to be my car, and they're not letting me do anything. Well, then you better stand up for yourself, huh? Whether it's making a choice about what color to paint the car or about whether he even wants to race, she teaches him to take a stand. It's a big lesson and one that she imparts beautifully. It goes without saying, but every kid could use a Brooke Davis in their corner. Are you sure you don't want to race? It's my life. I'm taking a stand. Is that okay? Yes, that's okay, honey. Come here. Number 14, making amends with Naley. We know Brooke can have a bit of a cruel streak when things aren't going her way. In season one, she throws a wrench into Nathan and Haley's budding relationship while intoxicated at a party out of spite. You know, Tudor Girl's little love note you passed around earlier. The one that said, call me if you need anything at all. But everyone makes mistakes. What matters is that she's also deeply kind and doesn't only acknowledge her bad behavior, but goes out of her way to right her wrong. I wanna make it up to you by going away, by hooking you and Nathan up tonight. It's so important that Brooke goes to both Nathan and Haley to apologize. And she doesn't get defensive, instead taking responsibility. What's more, she puts together a major date for them to fix things and give their romance a chance. Talk about being a truly good human being. Number 13, sacrificing her company. Brooke grows a great deal throughout One Tree Hill's nine seasons, and few instances represent that better than this. Considering her fraught familial situation, it's easy to see how she wasn't always the best version of herself. After all, all she really wanted was her parents' attention and approval. So it's not super surprising that she hired her mother, Victoria, to help her with her uber successful company. However, after finding out her mom screwed over their investors, Brooke makes the decision to prioritize human lives and connections over business. They are people, mother. People with wives and husbands and children, and they trusted us. And for the record, they didn't invest in the company. They invested in me. Giving up her company and her own fortune to pay those who lost everything back isn't easy, but it's the right thing. So, of course, it's what Brooke does. People say it's just business. Don't take it personally. Well, I think business is as personal as it gets. Number 12, her talk with Glenda. There's a lot to unpack about this episode. Luckily, Brooke makes it out of the school after Jimmy's initial display of violence. And though she's struggling, she never loses sight of what matters. We'll never tire of seeing her tell off the reporter who's trying to commodify the tragedy. I want to air this with a live feed. I'll get student reactions, their emotions. There's gold here. A little insensitive, don't you think? But we want to focus on the Glenda of it all. B. Davis has always been one of the pretty and popular, but here she sees the disparity between the different cliques at school. The thought that her classmate Glenda had to lie to her mother about them being friends hits Brooke hard, bringing the weight of it all into focus. Yet she handles the situation with care and compassion because that's who she is. Hey Glenda, I'm really sorry I don't know you. That's okay, I know you. Number 11, running for student president. During the first two seasons of the show, there's a ton of exposition, as the characters start slowly growing into the people they're meant to be. This storyline takes Brooke, a natural leader who will always go to bat for her community, leaps and bounds in that direction. I'm running for president. President. You realize I've been president since seventh grade. Really? What was your name again? Before now, she was mostly seen as the party girl, especially to acquaintances and classmates who didn't truly know her like us. But here, running for student body president, she simultaneously embraces that side of herself while also proving there's a lot more to her. She stands up to essentially say she's not a two-dimensional caricature or a stereotype. She's Brooke freaking Davis. Isn't that what we want in our president? Someone who can see past the superficial differences and bring us together? To say we're ecstatic when she wins would be an understatement. Number 10, 
time capsule video. Brooke has always been one to tell it like it is. Let's see, Peyton? Brooke, come on. I dare you to show us how you really feel. And her time capsule video is no exception. While most of the school is reminiscing about memories, complaining about their problems, or making startling confessions, but that doesn't change the fact I need to get closer to my father. Brooke instead makes a plea of hope for the future. She lays down some truths about how hard it is to be a girl in high school these days, and wishes that things will be better by the time the time capsule is unearthed. You're fat, dumb, sexual, and a guy, you're okay. Of course, this profound moment is hilariously followed up with a spontaneous strip show. Sassy and sincere, it's classic Brooke Davis. Number 9. Brooke and Peyton vs. Psycho Derek Like most lifelong friends, Brooke and Peyton have many ups and downs. But it seemed like their fights over Lucas and Nathan might just be the thing to end them. Peyton? Peyton even goes so far as to write a slur on Brooke's prom dress. But Brooke sees the glass as half full and goes to Peyton's house to make up, only to be greeted by Peyton's fake brother, Psycho Derek. With some unparalleled courage and some eighth grade cheer camp moves, Brooke saves Peyton from a grim fate, rescuing their friendship in the process. Peyton, eighth grade cheer camp! There's nothing like a majorly traumatizing experience to bring people together. I guess now it's hoes over psychos. <laughs> <laughs> Number 8. When She Fired Her Mother From the beginning of the series, Brooke's mom was this sort of mythical villain that was only spoken of but never seen. Oh, where the hell is my bed? Got a good price on the queen-size single bed on its way, love mom? After the time jump, however, we finally got to see the monster in the flesh and learned that Brooke was not exaggerating. It was hard to see the strong, confident woman we had watched Brooke grow into over the years still feel so small in the presence of her mother. But that only makes it all the more satisfying when Brooke finally stands up to her and takes back control of her company and her life. Whatever. The pair's relationship eventually improves, but we don't think that would have been possible without this moment. Number 7. Saying I love you to Julian for the first time Brooke has had some really bad luck with love, and when Julian comes along, things are complicated between them to say the least. You must be Julian. <laughs> Brooke Davis, I've read all about you. When he says that he loves her for the first time, she doesn't take it so well. You need to go. Why? What did I do? You know what you did. But after some ups and downs, she's finally ready to really let him in. She finds him on the set of his film and says, I love you, with a little help from some movie magic. I love you. Can't you see? Oh, can't you see? It's a beautiful and well-deserved moment for Brooke that had been a long time coming. Number 6. The Photo Lesson Out of all the characters on the show, Brooke arguably goes through the most impressive development. The Photo Lesson in Season 4 is a prime example of this. It's a big moment for everyone, as they reach the end of their senior year and re-examine themselves and their classmates. Brooke shares a very honest hour with Chase, where she admits that she has spent her whole life feeling insecure and inadequate. I was worried I wouldn't be enough for you. But by the end of the lesson, she embraces her insecurities and takes control of them rather than letting them control her. And Chase takes a picture of her with all her self-doubts projected onto her. It's powerful stuff. Today I spent an hour with Brooke Davis and I learned something. Number 5. Taking in Sam After four years away building her business, Brooke returns home to Tree Hill with a new dream. She decides it's time for the next stage in her life and wants a child. She proves just how motherly she can be when she looks after baby Angie, but she fittingly takes a deeper foray into motherhood with a troubled teenager. Having had several unpleasant run-ins with Sam, Brooke takes her in and becomes her temporary mom, seeing something in Sam that reminds her of her younger self. What are you doing here? It's kind of late to be out alone. Though things are rocky for them at first, it's amazing to see the pair grow together into a family that both of them need. Number 4. Cheer Competition 
Brooke has the opportunity to participate in a fashion show and jumpstart her future in the industry. But she would have to miss the cheer competition she looks forward to every year. After some deep contemplation, she makes the mature decision that she has plenty of time to achieve her dreams, but only a little time left being a kid. I'm saying the opposite. Time passes you by, young lady. Naturally, things go horribly wrong at the competition. But rather than get angry, Brooke makes the best of a bad situation and just starts dancing like a goof on stage. Inspiring the rest of the Ravens and the crowd to join in. You just can't keep Brooke Davis down. Number 3. Sacrificing Herself for Jamie Brooke has always been selfless when it comes to the people she loves, and no moment is more representative of that than when she nearly dies saving Jamie from a car wreck. I can't get it, buddy. Is this the one gonna be okay? Yeah, we're all gonna be okay. During a terrible storm, Brooke comes across Jamie and his friends with Miss Lauren in an overturned car. While trying to save Jamie, the car gets knocked into the river, with the both of them still inside. No, stop! 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 <laughs> Julian finds them and tries to save Brooke, but she demands that he save Jamie first. Julian, I can do it. Help him. I can do it. Julian, he's just a boy. I can get Julian. you out, Brooke. Save him. For a few heart-wrenching minutes, it seemed as though we might actually lose Brooke. Though that would have been shocking, it's no surprise that she was willing to risk her life for someone she loves. Number 2. Starting Clothes Over Bros Early on, Brooke spends a ton of time letting herself be defined by both her absent parents and the boys who neglect her. And after a letdown wherein her clothing designs are stolen, she's more dejected than ever. Oh, I thought you understood. Since you work for the company, any designs and profits that you made for the store belong to the store. But with some help from Haley and some artwork from Peyton, she bets on herself and starts her own clothing company while still in high school. Fittingly, she names the company after her and Peyton's catchphrase, clothes over bros. After watching Brooke get torn down so many times, we finally get to witness her start to see herself as the powerful, talented, and driven person we always knew her to be. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Setting Tara Straight Don't mess with Brooke Davis. You are dead to me. And you? I know your type. When she punched Rachel. We can't condone violence, but there's no denying Brooke's power here. One more thing. Don't ever hit me again. Molly Ringwald Dance Never stop dancing, girl. Won't you come to your body? I'll be alone. Oh, wow. <laughs> Breakfast Club, you were the priss. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Taking on her attacker Brooke has been feeling very vulnerable after being attacked in her store. Who wouldn't? But upon realizing Sam is in trouble with the same man, she runs headfirst into danger and unleashes hell on her attacker, Xavier. Have a nice night. It's an awesome, triumphant moment watching Brooke destroy this awful person who's caused so much harm. She single-handedly takes him out and holds him down until the police get there. You filthy. Thieving, heartless piece of trash. Apparently, Xavier doesn't learn his lesson the first time and has the nerve to return years later, only for our girl to double down and fight back again. <laughs> Brooke Davis is truly a queen. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.